Good afternoon and welcome to Our Lady of Grace. All of our music for this Mass can be found in the Brown Catholic Community Hymnal and also on our Advent Worship Aid. We have several announcements. For the ministers to the homebound, if you have not yet taken the parish Christmas gifts to your parishioners, please pick them up after Mass in the usher's room. They are to be delivered before Christmas. The new 2018 religious calendars will be distributed following this Mass for anyone who would like to take one home. And our responsorial psalm and communion antiphon can be found on your Advent worship aid in the brown hymnal. Please be sure to take a bulletin home for other announcements and details of events in the parish and surrounding community. We ask at this time that you please silence and turn off all cell phones and pagers in preparation for this Mass. Please join in singing our opening hymn, number 190, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Today is a day of joy because I have the uh, privilege, the honor, and being with you first of all, and second to admit Mr. John ba Zambar as a candidate uh, to the diaconate. So uh, this begins his last leg before ordination, God willing. And so it's good to gather around this altar to celebrate God's goodness us as he calls for uh, our vocations, whatever that vocation is, 
So if God calls to each of us to do something special and something great for him. As we prepare to celebrate these sacred mysteries, then, my brothers and sisters, let us call to mind our sins, asking for the Lord's pardon and peace to come into our lives and into our world. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you come in word and sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you will come in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring all of us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who see how your people faithfully await the feast of the Lord's Nativity, Enable us, we pray, to attain the joys of so great a salvation and to celebrate them always with solemn worship and glad rejoicing. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring glad tidings to the poor, to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, to announce a year of favor from the Lord and a day of vindication by our God. I rejoice heartily in the Lord in my God is the joy of my soul. For he has clothed me with a robe of salvation and wrapped me in a mantle of justice, like a bridegroom adorned with a diadem, like a bride bedecked with her jewels. As the earth brings forth its plants and a garden makes its growth spring up, so will the Lord God make justice and praise spring up before all the nations. The word of the Lord. Rejoice in God, my Savior, rejoice in God. 
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Brothers and sisters, rejoice always, pray without ceasing. In all circumstances, give thanks, for this is the will of God for you in Christ Jesus. Do not quench the spirit. Do not despise prophetic utterances. Test everything, retain what is good. Refrain from every kind of evil. May the God of peace make you perfectly holy, and may you entirely, spirit, soul, and body, be preserved blameless for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will also accomplish it. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. A man named John was sent from God. He came for testimony to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to testify to the light. And this is the testimony of John. When the Jews from Jerusalem sent priests and Levites to him to ask him, Who are you? He admitted and did not deny it, but admitted, I am not the Christ. So they asked him, What are you then? Are you Elijah? And he said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, No. So they said to him, Who are you? So we can give an answer to those who sent us. What do you have to say for yourself? He said, I am the voice of one cry out in the desert. Make straight the way of the Lord. As Isaiah the prophet said, some Pharisees were also sent. They asked him, 
Why then do you baptize, if you are not the Christ, or Elijah, or the prophet? John answered them, I am baptized with water, but there is one among you whom you do not recognize, the one who is coming after me, whose sandal strap I am not worthy to untie. This happened in Bethany across the Jordan, where John was baptizing. The Gospel of the Lord. Good evening again, everyone. Thank you. It's good to be here, as I said. Um, how many here were educated under the Baltimore Catechism, the old Baltimore Catechism? Okay. So, there were a lot of truths of our faith that were in that simple catechism, the, the terms we, we memorized in it. So, if I asked you, why did God make you? Those of you who had the catechism are going to say, God made me to know him, serve him in this world, and to be happy with him in the next. Isn't that amazing? For those of us who remember way back when, I'll give you another familiar example from the Baltimore Catechism. Question, what's a sacrament? The answer, a sacrament is an outward sign instituted by Christ in order to give grace. So you can all be confirmed now, you know, to these simple questions. <laughs> if St. Paul were to write a catechism, perhaps he would write something like this question. What is God's will for us? You know, he answered the question in our second reading where he writes, rejoice always, Pray without ceasing, in all circumstances give thanks. This is God's will for you. On this third Sunday of Advent, St. Paul lifts us up a bit. He makes us smile with his positive words, rejoice always. We call this Sunday Gaudete Sunday, Latin for the Sunday of rejoicing. That's why I wear this special color to make the children laugh a bit. And so we read Paul's little catechism where he tells us that God first wants us to rejoice always. We're meant to have a spirit of happiness. It's one of the reasons why I picked my, my motto when I was named a bishop. Serve the Lord with gladness. We should have a spirit of joy we're filled with joy once we really believe that God has sent his only son to be our savior. We're saved. We have a savior. Even if we face death, we know there's something on the other side. That's why we're going to celebrate very soon Christmas. Because a long for waited savior, we know him. God has come to us in the flesh. He walks with us. We are filled with joy when we know that our sins can be forgiven. When we accept that God wants to forgive our worst sin, you know, that, that one that we just wished we would never have committed, when we know that God wants to forgive that sin, we're lifted up. Like no one else can lift us up except a savior and his name is Jesus. You know, one of the, we have our priests here gathered. They know, they can 
Remember the story of a person who comes in after 40 years, not going to confession, never thinking that God could ever forgive their sin, and and they say, I absolve you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And that person weeps tears of joy. Rejoice, always. I say it again, rejoice. We have a Savior. You know, our religion is not one of doom and gloom, although sometimes people like to make it seem that way, but it's certainly not. Pope Francis wrote this in one of his encyclicals, The Gospel of Joy. He wrote, one of the more serious temptations which stifles boldness and zeal is a defeatism which turns into sourpusses. I I think it's the first time the word sourpuss has ever appeared in a papal document. I love it. He probably wrote it smiling, saying, oh, they're going to write about this. (laughs) The Holy Father is saying, God does not want long faces, gloomy dispositions, and cloudy outlooks. That attracts no one to Jesus, by the way. No one's going to come to the party if no one's smiling. And yes, I know, we're going to cry when something bad happens. And I certainly know at this time of year there are people you know, who suffer from depression, and, and I get that, and I, and I know that, and we all suffer from those bad moments from time to time, and sometimes they're, they're long moments. But still, if we have faith, we can rejoice that a better day is always coming. No matter how bad I feel, I know that there's a better day ahead. I know it's coming. I know it's coming. It's called the kingdom of God. Jesus leads us to it. He proclaims it. He died for it. He calls us to it. There's a better day coming. Rejoice always. Second, St. Paul says that God wants us to pray without ceasing. You know, Jesus said, when you pray, say our Father who art in heaven. He did not begin by saying, if you pray, say our Father who art in heaven. Because prayer is presumed to be part of our life. If we don't pray, if we don't use the gift of prayer, the ability to talk to God itself is a gift that God gives to us. If we do not use that gift, we are wasting, we are squandering our ability to talk to the Almighty who wants to talk to us. We have to use prayer in the same way that two people in love must communicate with one another or that relationship dissolves. When did you lose your Christian faith? When did you lose your Christianity? When did you stop praying? I'll tell you when. And you stop praying, seriously praying. And I know this, this includes a morning prayer. You know, wake up and say a prayer to God. An evening prayer, a prayer at mealtime. I often say to the kids who are being confirmed, don't be afraid to pay, pray for that Big Mac. And thank God for it, you know. Pray for, and Thanksgiving. Mass is not just coming to do something. For, for God's sake, it's a prayer. I mean, if we don't know what we're doing here, that we place ourselves before Almighty God who wants to talk to us through the Word and feed us through the sacraments, and we're now in communion with Him, then what are we doing here? It's a huge, beautiful prayer. The best prayer of the church is what we're doing right now. We're all gathered as God's family, talking to our Father God in the Holy Spirit. We're going to leave lifted up, I hope. We can pray the rosary. Oh, we should always have a rosary nearby. I, I, and I push this a lot. We should have a rosary in our pockets. If nothing else, to just remember what the prayers of the Hail Mary are and the Lord's Prayer are and the Creed. And You know, when you're in line and you're about ready to go crazy because the person in front of you has an avocado that doesn't have a stamp on it that tells the person what his price is, they're going to go check for the avocado price. You can say, thank God I have a moment now to pray. <laughs> and everyone else is getting angry and you stick your hand in your pocket Hail Mary, full of grace. (laughs) I guarantee you God will approve of that. You know? And it works, and it works, and it works. Just talk to God heart to heart. Go for a walk in the woods. Pray without ceasing. And by the way, it's more than just saying words or listening to words. To pray without ceasing requires that we... We become aware that God is always near us. God always has an ear for us. God is always beside us. In fact, God is is inside of us. To pray always means that I know where God is. Even when I'm sleeping, I know where God is. God is loving me even when I'm asleep. And I know that God is protecting me. 
That's prayer. That's prayer. God's with us in this church. He's with us in our work. And for those of you who are students, he's with you in your classroom. He's with us in our good times and our bad times everywhere. Third, God wants us to give thanks in all circumstances. You know, it's a skill that sometimes um, our culture's lost, the ability to say thank you. When someone refills your water glass, thank you. When someone holds the door for you, thank you. When someone pays you the slightest compliment, thank you. Because we have to develop grateful hearts when we realize that everything is a gift to us and a, a blessing. And then we know that it's all that the good things that God has done for us. He gave me life. Thank you, God. He forgave my sins. Thank you, God. He knows my name. Thank you, God. He walks with me always. Thank you, God. I can pray without ceasing. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. A person who is thankful recognizes that this day is a blessing. It is a gift from God to be here, a gift to be used, not to be squandered. This Mass is a blessing, not just an obligation, but a blessing, a blessing. In fact, Jesus died to give it to us. That's how much of a gift it is. Our faith is a blessing. You know, that's why we return to church every week for Mass, because we come to offer our thanks to God in the Eucharist, a word which means thanksgiving. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for you have given us the bread and wine that we can offer back to you. You gave us the bread and wine that we're going to give back to you so that you can take it and give it back to us as the body and blood of Jesus Christ himself. How awesome is that? Where else can you do that? Where else can you do that? Thank God for what he gave you, give it back to him, and he gives it back to us. Sevenfold blessing. His body and blood. We're we're so blessed. God is so good to us. And what about times of adversity? Can we thank God really? I mean, thank God always, really? In the times when things are bad? St. Paul says we must. It's God's will. If we allow our adversity to remind us that we need God's help. It's even then a blessing. You know, those poor people in the fires in California, I mean, there's no great things to be thankful for there except that I'm thankful that I know I need your help, God. And I am thankful that I know only you can help me, God. All this means that we must test our attitudes from time to time. We do need spiritual readjustment. I I call it like a spiritual chiropractor to come in and kind of align ourselves a bit more to God. Are we rejoicing, praying, and thankful enough? Are we being lifted up high enough? Are we focusing on things above rather than being held down by things below? Are we letting the light of Christ shine in our darkness? Are we able to say with today's psalm, my soul rejoices in God. My soul rejoices in God. Sometimes we do become like sour pusses. We stop talking to God. We complain too much. These are symptoms of a spiritual sickness. If we have these symptoms, and most of us have them from time to time, one or the other, or maybe all, three of them, then we need to ask God to come back into our lives. Come back to me, Lord. Which really means, translated, I need to open up my heart again to let him in. I need to stop closing that door. I need to open up the door to my heart and let him back in. And God will come to us when we ask him. God will always come to us when we ask him. For when the world needed a savior, he gave us one. And when we need him, he wants to come to us. Jesus always wants to be born again in us so that we can be born anew in him. He wants all of us to be renewed each and every day, to live our faith fresh as if we had heard it for the first time. Jesus is alive, and so can I be. Now we're about to admit Mr. John Zombar to candidacy for the permanent diaconate. And it's good to see a lot of our deacons here. And uh, I think the Lord is calling a good number of men to the diaconate in our diocese. 
John has gone through a lot to get to this day. <laughs> Those who know him know. And he has a bit more to go before I lay my hands on his head to ordain him. But we have seen in him the attitude of a Christian who is called by God to serve us in ordained ministry. And so we're in that final period of preparation. And we are glad that soon we may be able to see him serve this church as a permanent deacon, this church of Greensburg, this wonderful diocese of Greensburg with its tremendous people and deep faith. John, rejoice always and help us to rejoice. Pray for us and we promise to pray for you and be thankful to God for calling you to this day and who will continue to call you. We give thanks too for this and for every good thing. We give thanks to God for you and with you and we rejoice. Dearly beloved, this brother, John Zombar, who is here today in the presence of the church, is being recommended to me and to you for admission as a candidate for holy orders. Christ gave this command, ask the Lord of the harvest to send laborers into his harvest. Aware of the Lord's concern for his flock and realizing the needs of the church, especially here in Greensburg. Our brother considers himself ready to respond generously to the call of the Lord, trusting the Lord in whom he puts the hope of faithfully pursuing his vocation. He says with the prophet, here I am, send me. Compelled by the love of Christ and strengthened by the inner working of the Holy Spirit, John, you have arrived at the moment when you are to express openly your desire to be bound in holy orders for the service of God and mankind. This desire we receive with great joy. From this day on, you must cultivate more fully your vocation using especially those means that can be offered to you as help and support by the church community entrusted with this task. On the part of all of us trusting in the Lord, we will assist you with our love and prayer. Therefore, when you are called by name, come forward and declare your intention before the church that is assembled here at Our Lady of Grace. Will the candidates seeking admission to candidacy for holy orders please come forward? John David Zumbar. John, the pastors and teachers in charge of your formation and others who know you have given a favorable account of you, and we have full confidence in their testimony. In response to the Lord's call, do you resolve to complete your preparation so that in due time, through holy orders, you will be prepared to assume ministry within the church. I do. 
Do you resolve to prepare yourself in mind and spirit to give faithful service to Christ the Lord and his body, the church? The church accepts your resolve with joy. May God, who has begun the good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. Profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. Come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, let us humbly pray to our Lord and God that in his kindness he may pour out the grace of his blessing on this servant of his, John Zambar, who desires to devote himself to the ministry of the church as a permanent deacon. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer that our brother may draw closer to Christ and be enabled to witness to him in the world, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That he may share the burdens of men and women and always be able to listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That he may become a minister of the church who will strengthen the faith of his brothers and sisters by word and example and gather them together to partake of the Eucharist, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the Lord may send workers into his harvest and fill them with the gifts of his spirit, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all people may come to the fullness of peace and justice, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all are suffering, brothers and sisters, who share in the passion of Christ, may have freedom and healing, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all our faithful departed, including John and Nina Spino, may they rest in the peace of Christ, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In your kindness, Lord, Grant that your servant, John, may understand and live more fully each day the mystery of your love. May John prepare himself with a willing heart to exercise sacred ministry in the church. And thus, filled with the spirit of your charity, may he freely devote himself to the salvation of his brothers and sisters for the glory of your name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Congratulations, John. Thank you for your willingness to go through this final preparation for diaconate.
brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the sacrifice of our worship, Lord, we pray, be offered to you unceasingly to complete what was begun in sacred mystery and powerfully accomplish for us your saving work through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for all the oracles of the prophets foretold him, the Virgin Mother longed for him with love beyond our telling. John the Baptist sang of his coming and proclaimed his presence when he came. It is by his gift that we already rejoice at the mystery of his nativity, so that he may find us watchful in prayer and exultant in his praise. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, 
which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. If we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your son filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make us an eternal offering to you, so that we, we may obtain an inheritance with the elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the blessed Joseph, her spouse, and the blessed apostles, the greatest martyrs, and with all the saints, on his constant intercession, we rely on unfailing God. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Edward, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To, to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you, and their passing from this life, give kind and lift to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory of yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. 
Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you all. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. And only say the word my soul shall be. May the body of Christ be me safe in the eternal life.
Let us pray. We implore your mercy, Lord, that this divine sustenance may cleanse us of our faults and prepare us for the coming feasts. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. As we draw our Mass to close this day, I certainly, on behalf of Our Lady of Grace Parish, want to congratulate uh, John for receiving candidacy, uh, and I particularly want to extend a word of thanks to our choir and all the ministers who helped uh, greet people as they ar arrived. Also want to acknowledge our Rosary Altar Society, both of Our Lady of Grace and St. Benedict, who have provided a, a lovely reception following Mass. I encourage you to join us in Albany's Hall. Also want to acknowledge uh, those members of the St. Vincent de Paul Society who on a monthly basis uh, provide a food pantry here at Our Lady of Grace and part of John's uh, consistent ministry with support of that and I thank you for coming in such great numbers to support John tonight. As well as his brother Knights of Columbus, uh, both at a council in Greensburg as well as Youngwood where John is a member. Uh, so may you continue to be blessed by God's spirit as you journey toward the ordination of diaconate. Thank you. So St. Paul said, thank God in all circumstances. This is a good circumstance to thank God in. So we're grateful, and I'm, I'm certainly grateful for uh, being able to celebrate this Mass. A lot of times I drive past here at 4 o'clock uh, at night on Saturday, and I wonder what's going on there with all the cars. So it looks like a lot of good things go on here. And I also know it's good to go to the mall to shop because you're all here and I can go out there. <laughs> Listen, if I don't get a chance to tell you personally, have a blessed rest of this Advent because it's coming to a quick close. This time of spiritual preparation, which is essential to us as people who say that we follow Jesus, and then also have a Merry Christmas with you and your families. I extend my love and my greetings to them as well, to everyone who gathers with you. Be safe wherever you go in these next few days. Amen. You listen to the homily. But thank you. See, that's it. The Lord be with you. Bow your heads for the blessing. May the almighty and merciful God, by whose grace you have placed your faith in the coming of your only begotten Son, sanctify you by the radiance of Christ's advent and enrich you with his blessing. Amen. Amen. As you run the race of this present life, may he make you firm in faith, joyful in hope, and active in charity. Amen. Amen. So that rejoicing now with devotion at the Redeemer's coming in the flesh, you may be endowed with the rich reward of eternal life when he comes again in majesty. Amen. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks, thanks be to God. And thanks to Father Tyler for guiding us around through this, this liturgy. Thank you, Father.